Hey doing everyone, welcome back to NRL Fantasy Analysis. I wanted to jump in here and focus on analyzing 10 different teams. I just want to give you a bit of an idea of what I'd be looking for and what you should be looking for when you're analyzing your team before round one, you know, making sure that you're picking the right people, making the right decisions to score the best and also um, you know, make the most money heading into that first bunch of rounds. So we've got a team here from Iron Will. There's 6k remaining in the bank. And what we're looking for here is to have... You know, something close to a gun in each position would be ideal at, at, at the most, or at the least, I should say. Um, just to make sure that you can get some balance in, in the squads. You know, there's the odd year where you can go just cheapies, for example, if there's a lot of options and there's a lot of value, and you don't want to pick too many, so you don't pick a gun, for example. But that this year is probably not that year, except for maybe in the half position. There's, there's a bunch of guys that we could select, but, you know, if you're... Picking multiple guns in that position, I think that might be a slight issue just because there's so many cheapies and you might have like five, six, you know, seven halves in your team. But that's probably the biggest thing here. And we'll start with Iron Will. And, and he has, you know, starting with Randall, and he has Harry Grant on the bench. And that's completely fine as an option. You know, saves you a trade next week if you're looking to get him in anyway. In our mids there, we've got Payne Haas in there with our gun. We've got Stefano Utuikamanu in our mid range, which has some upside, which is cool. And then you got Bully Moore. So that's what I'd be looking for. Is like, do they are they sufficient gun? Are they a mid ranger uh, with some um, ability to make some cash and score well for you? And are they a cheapie that has maybe some dual position and they can make some money as well? That would be ideal. So that's a good start there. You know, edge position he's you know spent up a fair bit with Dave Fafita, and I said you know having him in the team it just looks great. 800k for a guy that's going to average in the mid 60s or low, mid to low 60s hopefully. You know, with these tackle busting rules, but uh, improvements in offloads, then um, they're going to be really cool. Jack Bird has some upside as well, has that dual position, which is nice there. You know, you can interchange Aiken and Bird, for example, which is cool. Now, halves, we have Moses, and uh, you know, if you've watched my latest video, I've got him as a, a decent option in the, in the halves. I think it's a couple better, but I think he's still going to go well, and his price has been dropped down to, to show the differences in his, um, in his you know, scoring from year to year. We then see... Ilias, which is great. Yeah, I'll, I'll be playing him from the start. It's sweet. Aiken and Panasini, both good options there. Um, Cheapy has some upside, and also Aiken has a little bit of upside in his keeper in the centers. Wing fullback, we've got Teddy. He's going to be the second best wing fullback. Pap and also Crichton. So great options there. And moving to the interchange, you're looking for four guys that can score over 30. And I think we have Schneider, Amone, um, Tuolangi, and Walters, I think is pretty solid. Obviously, it's very, very... Uh, He's gone very, very cheap on, on his emergencies. Obviously, when Grant's starting, you have Randall in there. So you have two guys at 350 um, and Tuolangi uh, there as well. So you've got all guys here that are going to average over 30. You've got Max King, Leo Thompson, just using that really cheap ideal um, player. And then Violia as well. So two guys that might not score incredible um, and a bunch of other guys that uh, should do it pretty well. My only worry here is if you're not going to have... If, if Violia, I should get to work out how to say him properly, um, and easier. But if he's not going to score too amazingly, I'm not exactly sure how he's going to go. You've got Thompson that might be only there a couple of weeks. We've got Walters that might be there one week. That's probably the only thing to think about. You obviously got Grant coming back, but that would mean you have you, after a couple of weeks, you might only, only have 18 or 19 playing playing players, which could be a slight issue. But that, other than that, I'm happy with the team. Mine will. Uh, well done. Lock it in for the season. And we'll move on to I drink Goon for Clune. So obviously has to have Clune in your side. This person here has decided to go for the opportunity to bank 238k, and that's just literally straight from trading Cleary to Cherry Evans. I'm assuming that's been his only change uh, in this team. You got Randall up top, and no, uh, so you got Grant there as well, which is cool. Arrow again, someone similar to uh, Stefano. So he's gone two mid rangers in this position. I think it's an uh, an okay one, and and leaving out Haas, but I think it's um. It can be a little bit risky if, if Stefano doesn't go as well. If Arrow averages 43, you're just missing out on probably a you know 20 point extra player in in a in a sorry a 15 to 20 point extra player in a half, for example. You're missing out on there, and that's what you'd be missing out on if you didn't go with a hooker as well. Obviously, you know they're they're playing Grant on the bench is completely cool, um, but if you were just to go Randall only or Randall and a Simkin or something like that, then you're probably missing out on a few points up top. So that's probably what's going to happen here with the mids. But if they both average 50, then you're going to be perfect anyway. Um, so it's a bit of a gamble that way. Edge, we've got uh, Nanai. And also Aiken. Aiken's solid, obviously. Nanai, we're not exactly sure how he's going to go. So are you okay to play him? He's got Tuolangi on the emergencies. I'm not sure who's going to score more. I'm probably going to play Tuolangi personally, even if I uh, if I start with Nanai. 
we got Adam Clune and you know, he's someone that I didn't speak too much in that um, that previous video. I think he's going to do okay, but I think Clifford's going to take over the majority of the effort there. Um, we also have DCE as captain, which is going to be really nice. He's you know one of the best captaincy options for sure, so spending that money up there is a good idea. Okay, Penasini and Crichton are going a bit cheaper in the in the centres, and then obviously a bit more cash here in the wing fullback position. So CNK. Hines and also Pappenhausen, I think, is solid, but I'd probably try and personally use a little bit more of that Chan's cash. Uh, he's obviously going to go with Clune, that's fine. So you maybe use a bit of Chan's cash to upgrade an arrow or Stefano. You, know, you can get a cheap guy here. You can cover. Uh, you can cover with Crichton down. You can move Tago over, for example. Um, yeah, that's definitely something you could do. Obviously, a little bit of cash on here with Josh King, for example. Uh, Tiger, you could switch one of them down to a cheaper guy, get some extra cash, upgrade up there, and downgrade here. Uh, other than that, I'm pretty happy with the side. You've got Kerman on the interchange, which is awesome. Ilias is there, Walters, um, and then he's going to play the um, the loop. So that's the other thing you can do, guys. If you put Grant in this four position, uh, for now, he plays a little bit later in the, in the, um, in the week. If Tago plays well round one, this is what you see here. If, if he plays well in the first game, which is on Thursday night, then you can uh, leave Grant there in the four position and you will get the emer first emergency, which would be Tago. So you can think about that. Um, and if he doesn't go well, for example, maybe he's going to put Chualangi in the four position, right? Because Grant hasn't played yet. You can move your bench around. You can move your starters around until they've played. So that's that on uh, team two. But other than that, pretty solid. Team three, up the ticks, 58K remaining. Ah, uh, sorry. Yeah, just remember, guys. That last team had 238k ready to keep uh, to get Cleary back. That's probably why it didn't look as strong, um, and that's kind of the risk you take in that first few rounds. But you'll be easy. It'll be easier for you to trade first week or get Cleary, for example. All right, this team has Pappenhausen as captain, so very interesting. He's going to be a little bit more boom or bust. So just be aware of that. He could get an 80. He also hasn't played any trials. He could get 35, 40. So just be aware of that. Um, completely happy with the rest of the side. Not too much. Random out there. Obviously, three big dogs in the wing fullback position. Again, that's going to allow you to not have a gun in the edge uh, in the center position. Make you go a little bit light in the halves. He does have Harry Grant on the bench as well, and a spend a little bit up on uh, Hastings, for example. So, yeah, I suppose that's okay. I haven't got him as you know completely high on my list. And three, uh, four, two hundred and forty guys. Uh, the team looks pretty solid. I'm just worried about the PAP, to be fair. They're going to score really well down below in the wing fullbacks, and, and hopefully guys like Stefano, Aiken, um, and you know, the cheapy 350 guys can, can do a job for this side. You know, Josh King, for example, as well. Um, that's about it. Interesting one. Just slight differences you know, across the board, for sure, especially guys that are listening to me, for example. All right, this person doesn't want to tell us how much extra cash they got in the bank, but a very interesting side with Damian Cook. He's going to score around that 60 mark. You've got... Guys like Arrow in the edge is cool. So you got Stefano and Arrow as those mids again. Kurt Mann in the starting side is good. Hines there as half. I think that's completely fine to play. So you've got Teddy and Pap down below and haven't spent too much there. So Hines instead of um, a natural half, even though he will be classed as that this year. Aiken's in there as well. It's a nice bit of... Um, uh, you know, a, a good spread of, of cash along all of these guys, which is cool. On the bench, Penasini at 350 is in the five position, which is interesting. Uh, yeah, I'd probably pick a half and an edge over him for sure. Uh, Walters will be interesting as well. Schneider there. So I haven't chosen any of those guys to play. And that's, I suppose, what happens when you... What's he got? He's got a fair few guns. Yeah, that extra extra gun down below, for example. Yeah, I suppose it's what you know. It's, it's now it then becomes a bit of a choice as to which guys you're going to play. And there's a bunch of guys on on these emergencies that you could play, which is a little bit of annoying. You don't want too many guys that uh, on that on that section that you'd be able to start with. For example, that means you've selected a bunch of 350k guys. So just be aware of that when you when you're looking into your side. Team five. All right, so we're going to start to see some less changes, except for this one here with um. With Junior Paulo, sorry, but for this, uh, this one doesn't look as clean. But Junior Paulo as captain is, is a very interesting one. If he scores a try, he's going to do really well for this player. But if he doesn't score a try, I can't see him doing incredibly. They've obviously listened to uh, TK a fair bit. This, uh, this Sam Cole, um, yeah, not sure about that one as captain especially. But if you look at, have we got any other decent options? You have Tommy Trebojevic. I'd be selecting over Paulo as captain any day of the week, but that's okay. Um, what else we got? Not too much else to say again. Nickel Klukstar, I'm not too crazy on. Ola Kawatu in the interchange. Coming off a bit of an injury, I probably wouldn't touch, to be fair. 
Um, you've got Mama Sia, 300k, so you know, hoping that he'll get more of an opportunity. I wouldn't be sitting with Tepai Maroa either. I don't think he's going to get much of a, a chance. Um, yes, guys like Max Hing and stuff would be a better in for this team uh, at that same price. You can then, yeah, there's plenty of options you can do with Ola to obviously check my videos. But that's probably my thoughts on this team. Other than that, pretty solid. Paulo and Ola are my worries. All right, so... Move to Brady, and what we've got here is, which I've noticed straight away, is Tanua Brown on the interchange. 377 is my worry. He has to average 35 plus, and I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do that in 40 minutes. He's done all right, you know, as a cash cow for the Warriors, but I'm not sure if I see that happening for the Cowboys, even though he's getting a start. They do have a bunch of forwards that could take his spot in, in Gilbert, for example. You know, McLean could be that starter as well, which he already is. But um, yeah, that's an interesting one there. This person's gone for Harry Grant as well. In the starting team, we see Sexton in there. Again, I'm not going to push anyone away from him. And Billy Smith, I like it as a bit of a change up with Smithy in there. 27K, I think we've got in the bank. But Heinz, Teddy, and Pap. So spent their, their cash down below, which is interesting. Do I not see Ilias? Wow, I don't see Ilias. I'd, yeah, I'm not really sure if I like that one. He, he did pretty solidly on the weekend without um, you know, doing anything spectacular. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Interesting. No Ilias. All right, we see no wobble, no gobble. 68K remaining. It's Noah Brown as well, so a couple of guys picking that. Eli Katoa is an interesting one. I don't see him playing big minutes. 50 minutes probably is his thing. He has to score really well, well and obviously, when he's on the park there. You can't just you know coast his way through that you know, 60 to 80 minutes. So he's an interesting one that I'm personally not going to go with, but I'm fine if other people do. Teddy, Pap, and Hines as well. Pap is captain again, that volatility. Burton, Aiken, so we've gone really heavy down in the centers and wing fullbacks. And just remember, I think this year is going to be bringing those guys back to back to the pack with the lack of you know points in tackle bus, for example. The game's slowing down a little bit out of the 40, so I think the middles, edges, and the hookers are going to do a lot better. So going pretty light in that position. Um, just be aware of that. Sam Walker, also you know light in the halves, so I think he's going to be solid, which is fine. Tamalolo, not sure how he's going to go early on, but a very interesting option as well. Stephen Crichton, not starting with him. See, that's what happens when you, you know, I'm pretty happy with him starting. Yes, so against the Manly buys, but at least somewhere in the 30s you can expect from him. Um, on average, yes, maybe not first game, so maybe that's the plan. Uh, Schneider, man, Bullymore. Okay, yeah, some interesting ones, guys. Just, yeah, it's, a, it's cool that there's a lot of different changes. And it's only minor changes, right? But it, it changes the complexion of your team a lot. All right, this team has captained Brandon Smith, 14K in the bank. Ugh, interesting. He started the year with a bunch of 40s last year, so be aware of that. Even in the hooking position, remember? Grant wasn't there. Arrow, Haas, Bullymore, yeah, good combination. Aiken and Papa Lee, so first one with Paps. Um, again, the dual position's great. He's going to do well. I'm just, just I, th I personally feel he's a little bit overvalued. Only slightly, like a 50k or 80k or something like that, but he'll, he'll average somewhere in the high 50s, which is fine. So if you want that, awesome. I'd probably captain him, for example, over... Um, him or Teddy over Brandon Smith, but yeah, if you think Smithy can score a meaty and, and do well, or if you just like watching him play, then that's fine too. Hines and Mann, Smith and Penasini, so yeah, spending, that there, spending a little bit less on Smith is cool. Teddy, Paps, and Crichton is a solid back three. And then our bench, yeah, it's all looking fairly similar. And it's good to see a, a mo most people uh, have moved <laughs> removed Davi Moali and, and those types of players is ideal. Two more to go, guys. All right, what do we got here? Blake Braley. This one's a very interesting team. There's a lot of mid-range guys already that I'm seeing, and that's a slight worry, especially guys like Braley with that have, don't have too much upside is, is my worry in this squad. Cakewell, probably a little bit of upside. Pango Jr. can be a bit hit and miss. We're not sure exactly how Sexton's going to go. Um, yeah, you got Burton at 593. You got also uh, as captain, which is a very interesting one. Obviously, they have a nicer game first up as the Broncos. Or Cowboys first up, not exactly sure, but that'll be you know a decent matchup for him, and he should be able to do fairly well. But captaincy, I'm a bit scared. Um, and you got a hammer, so that's the only worry is that you could probably downgrade one of the guys and upgrade somewhere else. Like Braley, I'd probably yes, you're trying to save a bit of cash there, but go to Cook, go to Smith, go to um, Marnie, or go to Grant. So I think would be my option there. Um, Cape Well is solid, but yeah, you could probably go. What do you got, Jeremy Nana? You can you can start with him, for example. You got two Alungis. Also, you got two edges on the bench. You could start with and bank that cash. So that's probably an option. But our four hundred seventy k in the bank too. I didn't see that. So that's that makes it very interesting. Saving plenty of cash to get Cleary. All right, that makes sense then. But this team has Mam, Mawali, and Kula, who yeah really aren't going to be playing. D Davy's got the tick because he's a reserve guy. So that's that. Um, Schneider. Yep. Sweet. Okay. Let's move on. Plenty of, a few things to change possibly, but up to you guys. 
I got the Miranda Park. Interesting. Uh, Mark asked Browns. Sure. Got my last name in there. Thank you. Uh, doesn't have any cash in the bank that we can see. We've got Bunty of Foa. I just don't see him as being a big option. He's been sitting at that price for a long time. Hughes and Moses are going heavy in the halves. Some decent money in Tabby for Doe and Pap down below. Campbell Graham's an interesting one. I just think he's way too expensive to start with. Murray Tulunga, uh, Tula, Tulungi, sorry, it's 361. It's probably a little bit too expensive. You know, yes, dual position, but being on the edge uh, on the wing is a bit interesting. And then you've got Jock Madden and Will Smith. I don't think either, either of them are options, so try and pick one of the other um, cheapies that I've mentioned. Uh, other than that, pretty solid team. So that's probably it, guys. I just wanted to go through those team, and, and it obviously gives you a bit of an idea of what the other teams look like and, and how you'd analyze it and look at your team and what you're kind of looking for there. You're looking for guns, you know, clear gun in each category or close to it. Um, some some categories might have two. And then you've got some mid ranges that we actually think will make some cash. They've got a different role. They've got something going on that's going to help them. And then some cash cows that are actually going to make some money and not just be a placeholder um, unless they're 220K. I think the 220K mark is very helpful. But other than that, um, yeah, not, it's not very helpful there. Anyway, guys, that's that video. I just wanted to pump that quick one out. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, and we'll, uh, we'll get into round one. I'm so excited. See you guys.